Welcome to RMD All Things Aesthetics and Wellness Podcast with me, your host, Dr. Deborah Durst, and my co-host and a special guest today. So Faraday, do you want to? Hey guys, Faraday Golombieski, nurse practitioner here at Revitalize MD. And as Dr. Durst said, we have a very special guest today. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about you. Sure. My name is Paul Fulford. I'm in global product development. And we're going to be speaking about a specific product today called AccuFit. And I work for Lutronic Incorporated. So we have AccuFit and we love AccuFit. And so for muscle building, there is nothing like AccuFit. And so we're going to talk about how AccuFit came to market and the difference between that and some other devices on the market so that you then understand why you will love it more than the others as well because the science is there and it supports it. It is hands down our favorite muscle building machine for many reasons. So if you wanna go ahead and tell us a little bit about sure. how uh, AccuFit came about. Well, it's kind of been 60 years really in the making, right? So there's been a lot of different uses with electrical current and you know medicine. Um, but when you look at uh, where muscle stem kind of got more popularized. It was in like the 1960s with the Russian cosmonaut and Olympic programs, right? And that's what we still term today Russian stem, which would be roughly like up to 10 milliamps of electricity. Say, very low. Yeah, very yeah. low. For a lot of people that maybe are not used to doing medical treatments have mm -hmm. had an experience with a TENS unit, right? Mm -hmm. The um, most basic form, right? Right, yes. right. so like, where they've had the little sticky pads on and it can make your muscle twitch, but it's really not contracting the muscle. It's just going to the nerves, it deadens. I was gonna say, it's yeah. more nerve yeah. improvement, isn't it? Yeah. As and far as neuropathy and pain, yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you look at you know ways to manipulate a muscle, there's two different ways. There's indirect and there's direct, right? Indirect is an easier way to do it, but just like the two differences between the words are, there's one that's direct, there's one that's indirect, right? Um, and then there's direct. Um, so when you fast forward going, you know, to where, you know, there was functional movement happening, you know, what it was introduced with functional magnet, right? Which is indirect stimulation. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's placed over an area and it lifts and pulls towards the center, right? It lifts and pulls towards the center, mimicking a linear movement just where that handpiece is, right? Um, then there was modified direct electrical stimulation, which allowed for actually full end to end uh, manipulation of the muscle. And then fast forward a, like a year later, which is where the product we're speaking about today, uh, AccuFit evolved to, you know, optimized direct le electrical stimulation, where it's not only, you know, having control of the muscle end to end, but it's actually based off of movement, not confusion. You know, AccuFit was the only device designed from the ground up, you know, with biomechanical physiological principles of how effort nerves and muscles contract and how those muscle groups work together for specific movements, right? So AccuFit, in essence, is going to use in correct anatomical placement and specific waveforms to control those muscles and different size hand pieces to do that in order to best mimic the way the body would move. And take you through a workout, essentially. Correct. Right. And, and using all planes of movement, not just a linear movement, right? So fully gotcha. manipulating that muscle. Yes. So when we hear, and we've talked about this before, saying that AccuFit was the second generation, because everybody has heard of MSculpt, mm -hmm. and we knew the difference and completely understand the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. But I also, and we'll get into that, I also think it's, I've heard maybe it's third generation. It sounds like what you're talking about is kind of that EMS direct, mm -hmm. not going through workout in between. Correct. It's, okay. It's more of a confusion movement and like a, it stimulates the area, um, but it's not like actual movement of the muscle, like how it would mimic a movement in real life. Like when you look at the core treatments, there's four different modes, right? Mm -hmm. You've got twist, which mimics a medicine ball twist side mm -hmm. to side, right? Then you've got hold, which is a 20 second contraction. It's like Pretty being intense. on a, yeah, when it's like being on a <laughs> Very intense. bench. It, it's, it's my favorite mode of all yeah, of them. It's like intense. you're like, oh, That's this like, yeah. is yeah. happening. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And, holding that view. Yeah, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's almost like you're on a decline bench doing like a 10 second sit up up and a 10 second sit up down, like plyometrically, like holding that contraction. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the third movement for the core would be grip, which 
is like doing a sit up like this and a sit up like this. Getting so, those obliques. Yeah, and it's 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 sculpting, right? It's mm -hmm. like it, and it's kind of doing this. So it's the weirdest feeling one. It feels like there's, yes. uh, you know, things Heck moving yeah, around. That's like my favorite. Like yeah. I feel like it's shrinking my love handle. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, like, you know. There's an immediate, like, oh, yeah. immediate before and that after. That one's my show. favorite. Yeah, and yeah. you feel tight and your posture's better and everything right after. But. I'm, I'm a huge movie nerd, right? So I always imagined that that's what the little guy looked like in Spaceballs. Like, that's how it felt before he popped out of the stomach. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not, nowhere no, near as painful. I never get yeah, that out yeah, of my yeah. head. Nowhere near as painful forever. as that would be, right? But it's just like, it's, it's, it's a weird feeling, right? Now it, we're going to have to think about that the next time we're going well, through. It's well, stuck yeah. now, forever. You, yeah. Thanks, Paul. You can probably, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can probably attest, both of you, to like the a lot of different treatments you do here, right? Why this one is fun for me and probably for you all and most people that talk about it is that there's laughter that occurs a lot with this treatment, right? Because it's so foreign. You can't believe that it's doing that. Yes. And it's like, there's a lot of giggling that happens, you know. Or a lot of like whining, actually. <laughs> We've seen that be too. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, don't take it up more. Don't take it up more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're like, you're only on 40. And then natural yeah. competition yeah. with yeah. it. That right. Occurs, right. right. So right. there's right. always right. that yes. in this office. Yeah. yeah. And then you like, again, so for those people and it's kind of intense, right? Then that last mode is, is called tap, right? Yeah. Which is like quick kick, flutter kicks, right? And it's like relaxation and like stimulation. And then you cycle back to the top again, right? So it's kind it's trying to mimic like high intensity interval training mm -hmm. where you're going through these different movements to get different parts like strength, sculpting, endurance, all these different pieces that you would from a traditional workout, right? Mm -hmm. I don't. And again, I'm not like I know that I do a lot of yoga. I love, you know, core workouts, but I feel like some people even very built muscular, they're working out all the time. Core might be one of those ones that they kind of leave out mm -hmm. abs. Right. And so I think that even with men, it, it seems like we hear that over and over again, that yes. they don't spend a lot of time actually working on the core, but they're doing that as part of all the other workouts. But I think the other thing we also hear a lot of is that when we do put those patients on and we are working on core, their hips feel a little bit better. Their oh, lower back yeah. feels a little bit better. And they're like, man, I need to stop skipping my ab workout. Yes. Yeah, this is true. I mean, I had lower back pain on my right side. You know, mm -hmm. I played sports till I was you know, to my 20 and uh, beat up my body at a young age and still do, right? Yeah, We're always on our say. feet and yeah. do stuff. And You're not done yet. Work hard, play hard, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I did my series of four, that felt better because I strengthened in front of it. And I, and I will do a maintenance at least mm -hmm. probably every three to four weeks because I'll start mm -hmm. to feel it a little bit. And you know, I need that back, you know, and I try to stay active, but I'm busy just like everyone. Well, so. when you're traveling all the time, I feel like that really helps Yeah. because that was a huge selling point for me when we demoed the machine is that I was having a little bit of right hip pain from recent travel. I think Marissa had something very similar, one of our estheticians. Yeah. And we did the machine and it was gone and it wasn't brought up during the demo you know, specifically, we weren't complaining about hip pain and it wasn't brought up that that would get better than after I'm like, my hip pain's gone. So that was a huge selling point for me because if it's going to take some pressure and load and stress off of a joint that is bothering you, and especially, you know, how hard travel can be sitting in a plane and, you know, and on the back too. And I think one of the things that's exciting about this is like, yes, you know, it can help fit people become more fit or push, push past. Yes push past plateaus in the yes, gym, right? Yeah. And that's initially why we were excited about it. But yeah. what you're about to touch into is what's really gotten us is, very passionate and, about and, this machine. And you all do all encompassing wellness, right? Uh -huh. So like it's, uh -huh. there's, there's this functional aspect to it, right? Because uh -huh. of what you just mentioned, right? Where if you can treat something in front of or above and below, you're providing support, right? Yes. You know, so like, yeah. You know, when it's just for like quality of life improvement, you know, let's say you, people that don't have the wherewithal, whether it's age or in some kind of condition to be able to even build up stamina mm -hmm. to get to the gym. Right. It's like if there's two areas that they could focus on, it'd be core and glutes because those mm -hmm. are power centers. Right. Yes. And then maybe they can get to a point where they can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. I live in Disney World. Right. I live in Orlando. And there's a lot of grandparents that would like to get around the parks with their grandkids easier. Oh, yeah. Treating yeah. those two areas can help them, you know, walk more and spend time with them. Right. Yes, that's true. In the back, like so lower back, you can do. Mm -hmm. 
right now with the with the electrodes mm -hmm. um, and so that's another area because I think again that's an area that happens with aging is again core and spinal you know stability with the deep muscles or muscles in general we're losing muscular uh, volume as we age and so this actually allows us to work them out more just well, like with the legs too absolutely yes, yes. Yeah, these larger about, muscles yeah. when you're when you're doing the, the exercises for the low back, you're mm -hmm. doing like a body weight, like body extension like this, right? Or you're laying yes. down, Full extensions, doing yeah. like this, or you're doing deadlifts, right? Which is form all the way, right? Mm -hmm. But what you will what you can see physically with AccuFit in a treatment mode, like that specifically hold, is it does that deadlift movement without putting a weighted load on the body, mm -hmm. without, you know, engaging like directly where the ligaments can connect the bone and what else is insane about what happens right it's just it's crazy it's kind of counterintuitive but when you think about the science it makes sense is that un unless people there's only two reasons why somebody should get really sore from true anatomically correct bioelectrical stimulation there's really two main reasons right i'm not gonna say the only but there's two main ones one is if it's a dormant muscle that hasn't been active for a long period of time, mm -hmm. or two, if it's improper, irregular movement of that muscle, which creates more of a DOMS or a rhabdo mm -hmm. situation, right? That's not good soreness, mm -hmm. right? What's crazy about AccuFit is that because of those things we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. it's not putting a weighted load on the body, not even like technically the force of gravity because you're just sitting there and it's mm -hmm. doing these movements. It's, you're not increasing your heart rate and you're not yeah. making this an aerobic activity and you're not burning ATP. And what's the biggest byproduct of burning ATP? Lactic acid. Yeah, lactic acid, and that's why we get sore, right? Mm -hmm. Not to mention it's isolated, mm -hmm. right? Where when you're doing a regular sit up, mm -hmm. you're doing your core and obliques, but also your upper legs, your glutes, your low back, your mid back, you're, you know, you're engaging all these other areas. Mm -hmm. You know, you could never accomplish that targeting thing that AccuFit is allows you to do with the muscle. And you're taking human error out of it. Deadlifts are one of the easiest things to injure yourself in if you're oh, yeah. not having Bad proper form. form. I hate deadlifts. They're also the easiest thing to hate. It was going to be my <laughs> next thing. I hate well, deadlifts. Well, that and burpees. That yeah. and burpees yeah. are right there burpees together. Burpees are another. Yes. But yeah. Because they have yeah. a high injury yeah. aspect to them. Yeah. Because form is so important. So if you can yeah. mimic that workout safely oh, i agree so that was a lot to unpack though like from the very beginning on because mm -hmm. again you know not working out like not burning energy like we will start at the very beginning of that part yeah, yeah that was a lot to unpack right yeah it is i mean it is i but parts that i didn't know and i think would be important yeah. so what was that again can so you, can you repeat that yeah, sure. so let's take that yeah. down mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so, slow it down a little bit it down yeah. for us so yeah. anytime there's you know motion there's energy burned right mm -hmm. you know kinetic energy all things right so um we have fuel in our body that is burned for you know the purposes of the you know creating potential energy mm -hmm. or, you know so it's 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 one of those things that um there are byproducts when things get utilized right J just like when there's a dead cell in the body the body signals to send out microphages and they eat the dead cells and we mm -hmm. get rid of it by going to the restroom right mm -hmm. same thing is with you know burning of energy right mm -hmm. so why people get sore is an overexertion of that area and, and and because it's been broken down the it, a lot and you're normally increasing your heart rate and it's aerobic and you're burning tons and tons and tons of energy you have a lot a lot of byproducts gotcha. yes right? okay see we need it being that that down. We need to go back yes down. right and but then, it's all the things that you're doing with that right. that is yeah. going to build it up even more right and mm -hmm. for for people that are very strict with their workout schedule mm -hmm. What they find the best results with AccuFit is doing it after a workout because doing it before they could still, but they're going to be fatiguing the muscle, whether it's going to have the same kind of soreness or not, they're still working it. Right. So mm -hmm. they're not going to maximize that workout. So people that are looking to dial this in to take them to another level, it's okay. You did legs this day, then you do legs and then you come in and do the treatment so you can work the body out past the normal point of exhaustion. Mm, that's smart. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh no, now you're going to be, <laughs> gonna be like, yeah, now we're going to be scheduling the AccuFit specifically. Yes. Instead, we're just jumping but on I for mean, like that's and, huge yeah, because sense. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. 
Because what so, do you want to do to build muscle? Work it past do fatigue Do you point. feel without like... Without creating a that. DOMS or a rhabdo situation. Yeah. Exactly. Right? But that brings up like the whole, again, and I think there's like so many trains of thought on this and it's kind of outside the AccuFit, but more the fitness is, you know, that um, eating like in providing energy for muscle workouts and muscle building, right? And I've heard so many different schools of thought on that. Like if you want to, again, not to necessarily exhaust the muscle without some kind of fuel, because otherwise, again, you're using glycogen that you normally would need to build muscle, right? Mm -hmm. And so that'll be interesting. You think a little workout, this is off like the beaten path, but you think a little food before the AccuFit or in between the workout is I can tell you fuel? that we could mm -hmm. spend a couple more episodes I know. On, on diet and yes. dialing all that in. Well, you know? And we have yes. definitely yeah. had yeah. podcasts yeah. on nutrition sure, uh, and yeah. diet oh, yeah. and the importance yeah. of yes, so it is, fueling it, the body. And it's also individual dependent, same as like people wanting a con like a, a, to understand how this treatment would work for them. Even if they send a photo in, you know, like you need to see how their body moves with this treatment, right? So, and where things lie. And a mm -hmm. photo can't tell you that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, it, they, you, they need to come in to be assessed for the treatment, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, when it comes to diet, that's also, you know, an individual thing, right? Yes, and if you, yeah. do, like, it's like one thing that one sport that's always done really well at this is baseball, right? They have their numbers for everything. If you don't know what your own numbers are, how do you know if you're improving? Where, where's your benchmark, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, having blood work done and under, mm -hmm. like even food sensitivity tests. And that's and where the yeah. complete yeah. and comprehensive aspect. We love bod pods. We do bod pods. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, our patients get bod pods. Yeah. Prior to treatment, midway through and towards yes. the end. Mm -hmm. Because again, like you want objective numbers to look at. So your stats, like you want your stats. Yeah. And I think that's the best way when we're doing comprehensive and we're optimizing hormones or we're doing peptides or we're doing these body contouring or, you know, body shaping um, and defining, you know, because I almost consider this like really kind of a body defining a because it's definitely. providing you more definition but if you're as you're building muscle those numbers will change yeah. and, and the scale is not reliable yeah. because no, right? 150 yeah. pounds can look very different oh, very different at the same well, height well here's the thing right? when you're talking to these people they always are asking well am i gonna lose weight well maybe yeah. right it's not a weight loss treatment right like that's mm -hmm. not what it's for mm -hmm. right this is where we're, we're, we're stimulating we're the muscle, muscle, muscle right yes so but what happens people especially when they're doing this to catalyze lifestyle change, right? They're building muscle and they're maintaining a caloric intake and now they're active, right? So if they're mm -hmm. taking in 1800 calories a day now mm -hmm. and they are going to build building muscle, you know, and they're active, if they're maintaining that caloric intake, if they have more muscle, they're going to burn more energy, but they're oh, not yeah. changing yeah. the caloric intake and that's how you properly lose weight. And right. that's what we've been taught. Yes. We talk about that on a we daily basis because we again, stress it. Yeah. Well, as you age, your hormones decline. As testosterone declines, if you're not optimizing, you don't build mm -hmm. muscle. So you won't build as easy, even if you're using AccuFit. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, but as you build muscle through comprehensive, you know, means and even amino acids and protein intake, like the the nutrition is hugely important in this, then you're going to metabolize faster and you're gonna burn fat. And so we always say it's not an automatic weight loss. We it don't is really not. there is no quick do fix. That. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it, it, you're gonna to need to do your part and it is the whole body. You whole know, body. it really yeah. is. It is diet, it is nutrition, it is the workout, it is discipline, it is making that commitment. It's a commitment. Yes. And you know, it's th there's a lot of things that are universal sayings, right? And like in software and you know, mm -hmm. programming, they say garbage in, garbage out, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for your body, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you don't have the fuel to properly, you know, optimize your outcomes, you know, and we don't, we can't, we can do our best to eat good foods, but you can't do it in foods alone anymore. You mm -hmm. have to supplement, you know, we, mm -hmm. and you have to know what you're deficient in, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've had a lot of my own struggles that I had to go through uh, to figure out what was going on with me, right? And food was the biggest culprit of all of it, 
Yeah, it is. Especially with inflammation. Yes, and yeah. I mean, and your GI tract again, a whole nother yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah. But this or is a not a one them. treatment done. No. You're going to do one treatment on your abs and walk out with a six pack. No. This is definitely a treatment series with maintenance. Yes. Yes. So you do the treatments roughly two treatments a week for two weeks mm -hmm. or one treatment a week for four. The typical protocol and all the data is based off of four 30 minute mm -hmm. treatments. And you will have seen your results and and we we always say feel because again like you said if you walk, if you don't have visible muscle you're not gonna have six pack abs yes you know you'll see you can see a change and you can, can change, document yeah. that right but you know it's realistic expectations right and it's like mm -hmm. okay you'll have seen and felt your results two weeks after your last treatment so as soon as four weeks from start or six weeks from start right yes then you look at it and you say okay did we accomplish what we wanted or do we want more and then you maybe do another series of four, right? Or you see another influential area that would be beneficial to strengthen, whether it's for that yeah, purpose oh yes, or, yeah. you know, sculpt, you know, you change it to another area because now you have a new problem area. And that's the wonderful <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. With this machine, it's yeah. very versatile. Yeah. And we can work multiple really, different muscles. You yeah. really do want to work in other areas. So, so the studies, when you say the studies and based on four treatments, yeah. like that was showing what else was shown in those studies so when we and looked what at, was shown during this like at four yeah. weeks or four treatments so we when we were doing you know we had initial paper that was published and then internally we did a lot more once we started adjusting placements but we we had a published in the jdd was an article showing you know an average of thickness increase and an average of temporary fat reduction right from doing those treatments and as we dialed it in you know we started to see through ultrasound and differences you know around a 30% thickness increase. And that also depends on someone's current fitness level, right? Mm -hmm. And that's consistent, right? And what, but what we see more of that's like a non-data point that people that get the treatment give feedback about is after they do their series of four and they start to come back for maintenance, like, and they're like happy where they are, they start back like at their original percentage or lower because they've built muscle. And what happens is you need less energy when you have more lean muscle mass right mm -hmm. so there is no set percentage with this treatment it's a, it's a matter of anatomical placement because everybody's different right mm -hmm. outside of chromosomal abnormalities everybody has the same number of bones and muscle right but we're all structured different mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how that's supposed to engage properly for each person that movement is but placement is a little different so mm -hmm. you have to target that in and there's a mode for that mm -hmm. and it's specific it's specific for them mm -hmm. and then once they've improved that they will have more muscle that's receptive to treatment and they're going down in energy, right? So you kind of take two steps forward and maybe three steps back sometimes. Okay. But it's mm -hmm. not, it's, that's good. But that's with everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's with everything in yeah. life. Mm -hmm. But this is yeah. one you want to be a lower number. It's like golf, right? You want this one to be lower. Oh yeah. The, trust me. We yeah. want those bod pod numbers <laughs> yeah. to go down, not up. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most everything we want. Yeah. Yes. Well, some things we don't want to yeah. get lower, right, but right. Um, hormones, for no. instance, we want right. those to stay. But I don't think that there's a, and again, you know, we'll get to even, I guess, more science mm -hmm. um, on a different, you know, segment of this AccuFit podcast series. And where I it's think, being utilized. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's where. definitely. So you guys will oh, definitely want to uh, listen to where yeah, it's definitely. being utilized. Well, and that's the interesting part is I don't think that there's a population that cannot um, use AccuFit. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the extreme fitness, you know, professional athletes. But even patients that have muscle, you know, again, from degeneration, from degeneration yeah. or illnesses or medical conditions, mm -hmm. you know, so there's no segment of the population that would not benefit. So Correct. that's what we love about this treatment. And absolutely. And you'll see results as well. Thank you so much, Paul, for yes. being Thank with you. us today and kind of explaining again it was a transition into that. So electromagnetic and then a more direct stimulation, but not a workout. And then the third generation AccuFit that takes you through a workout and does direct um, muscle stimulation, electrical muscle stimulation. So check out AccuFit and let us know your comments. If you've already tried it, please share your experience because we are willing to deep dive into anything aesthetics or wellness. Thank, Thank you. you.